we will be taking up a new topic today cryptographic hash function and bit of uh, what we have done in last class okay all right just a minute okay so these are the references that i've used um okay so just just uh, to give you a brief review a preamble about another topic you know, uh, the war today that's happening between countries, you know, like the war that's, that has completed more than a year is between Russia and Ukraine. Okay. Is it just the war happening on, uh, you know, land or sky? Is a war also happening, which is uh, a cyber war? Okay. So note that, uh, every equipment that is being used in the war okay is uh, internet connected in some way right because uh, there is a lot of intelligence in the even the rifles and you know telescopes or whatever right so all these are internet connected okay and all critical infrastructure of the country like power plants and uh, you know hospitals and you know even where military data is kept all of these are internet connected then how can we secure it there's a question right so in in this war that's happening both countries are using cyber war as well right okay and this is continue to happen even on country you know like in india there have been attempts to uh, to infiltrate into atomic power plant in southern india it happened just few years back okay so there's nothing uh, unusual about it and then so the country is not only will have regular army or navy or uh, air force but also a, a cyber army okay and of course a country that leads uh, in this whole cyber warfare is uh, israel okay all right so, so it's, you know, in cyber war, we, <clears throat> in cyber war, we use malware, uh, denial of service attacks, illegal transfer of funds, phishing attacks. You know, all these things can be used, right? I mean, say for example, critical infrastructure of Ukraine or Russia can be completely uh, encrypted. Okay, so that it becomes unusable. Okay, new viruses are being designed that infiltrate into the critical systems. Website attack is very common, right? Okay, that keeps happening. Uh, crashing down the very important websites in the country. And attack on essential services. So, so in future, we'll see more cyber attacks. Okay, all right. Okay, so that's all. Just uh, if you're interested, just just uh, do Google search. You'll get tons of material on this. All right. Last class we have studied the block ciphers. We see, call it block because uh, we do transformation of on a block of certain size. Okay, so it's a original text and then this cipher text. But these are block of some size, say five hundred twelve bits. Okay, now this is not very practical scheme. We have seen the way we can do this, but these are not very practical because the message can be of arbitrary length. Okay, then we have uh, came out with mode of modes of operation. Okay, another problem there is that this uh, this transformation or encryption is deterministic, and this determinism is not IND CPA secure. So essentially, it means that reveal some information. So I bring in a little bit of non-determinism into the picture, right? And in order to make it non-deterministic, we have uh, some kind of randomness introduced. So we see that ECB is not very secure because it's deterministic. So we have concept of initialization vector and the concept of feedback here. And that brings in non-determinism, and we call this a CBC mode. Okay, and then CBC mode we have seen we can only partially parallelize it. Okay, encryption cannot be parallelized, but decryption can be parallelized. 
and we came out with CTR mode we, we, where we can uh, decrypt both encryption and uh, sorry, we, where we can uh, parallelize both encryption and decryption. All right, so that was it. Okay, all right, so we have uh, completed up to this point. So today, today, briefly, for a few minutes, we'll look at why symmetric encryption using block ciphers lack integrity and authenticity. Now, what we have achieved through this one is confidentiality. Okay, right. So, if we have an insecure channel, Bob is transmitting something to Alice or, or, or vice versa. Alice is transmitting to Bob, where Bob is transmitting over leaky channel or insecure channel, where uh, there are characters like Eve or Mallory. Now, see, whatever she, suppose she, Alice sends a very personal private message, she encrypts it with something using, say, AES uh, CBC. So this becomes encrypted form. So if Eve sees this, she cannot make out what is being sent. So this gives confidentiality. Okay, now can there be another type of, of attack Eve or Mallory can do? While she cannot find out what Alice is sending, but can she change this, contents of this? If she can change the contents of so something being sent, then we can say that it lacks integrity. Okay, and whatever uh, uh, Bob will receive will be something that Mallory has changed, but he will never come to know that Mallory has changed this. Okay, she, she, uh, what will, will uh, Bob do? Um, the, he will also have a key K, will use a key K and decrypt this and he will get some junk. Okay, all right. Uh, so it lacks, and it suppose Mallory creates a new message, right, and sends it to Bob. Bob will not come to know. And in the message, if, you know, pretends if uh, it is it has come from Alice, then Bob will never come to know. Okay, so it lacks book integrity and authenticity. What we have achieved through block ciphers is simply uh, confidentiality. Okay, same thing we show it here, right? Okay. So consider the CTR mode. This is a simple example given. Okay, Mallory tempers with the cipher text using XOR. So this is the original message and uh, okay and uh, somehow Mallory has got this message in between because you know what we are telling is that we are trying to prove that it you know the whole thing does not have uh, integrity right all right so so this is the original cipher text Okay, so uh, basically what we are doing, we are uh, we have a message and then we have some input in CTR mode we take. Okay, these are the counter numbers. And then we get cipher text, right? So this is a cipher text we have received. Okay, and now, okay, and uh, so these two are, this is available to Mallory and this is also available to Mallory. Okay, so now can she make some changes without knowing the key K? Okay, now in this method, if she changes a few bits, okay, then she can change 
the message right so what uh, here if she changes uh, some bits here okay uh, in in ciphertext she receives then as a result uh, c dash changes and which essentially means that instead of original message say hundred dollars to mallory it now it becomes uh, just a minute okay instead of uh, pay hundred dollars so now mallory have changed it to pay nine hundred dollars to her okay please go through this uh, example you will understand it uh, okay just a minute now the original message is that pay mallory hundred dollars and now by changing the cipher text smartly, she can change it to, uh, you know, change it to pay $900, okay? All right, okay. Uh, or second example is that, yeah. Second example is that uh, in case of CBC, just simply manipulate, I mean, uh, Mallory can manipulate the message, right? Altering a bit of ciphertext causes some blocks to become random garbage. Uh, garbage. Okay, so, so Mallory just changes. So Alice has sent something in encrypted form. Mal uh, Mallory is in between. So she is the man in the middle and uh, changes a bit. Whatever uh, Bob receives, Will not be able to make out what it is right so basically integrity is lost as we discussed earlier okay all right so these are the two things that we have discussed now let's move on to hash functions okay and then we'll move into max uh, on message authentication codes okay but hash is necessary even for that so we'll read hash note that we have already studied hash when we said it, passwords, okay? Passwords are not encrypted, but they are hashed. Now, one thing you would have observed in password file that you generated the hashed output is of the same size. Whatever is the length of password output is same. Okay, all right, unlike encryption, Encryption, the text size, original text size and output size is the same. You know, whatever be the size in input size, say M, and then you get uh, encryption of M using some key K, this size and the other size encrypted is same size, is essentially same. In case of hashing, whatever be size of your input, Okay, it could be a file of say 50K. Output is always a small fixed size. Okay, whatever we size, it could be 100K or 150K or whatever. Output, which is hashed output, is always of fixed size. Okay, all right. So now let's look at this. Okay, <clears throat> it's very important cryptographic primitive. So we, since it's a fixed size, so we uh, call it a digest of a message. Okay, all right, it's a short and fixed length in bit, bit string, it's a bit string of fixed length. So we can see this as a fingerprint of a message. Note that hashes don't use keys. Encryption, symmetric key encryption, we have seen the keys are used, right? Both by sender and receiver. But here in hash, there is no concept of key. It's a just hash function, which is very clearly defined. Everyone knows who, what is the algorithm for hash function. Then what is the issue? then why can't one decrypt it? And we say it's a one way. Right? Okay. 
it means that for given one string input you get hash version of this okay you can if you just hash this hash this input you get this mess uh, digest second time if you do the same thing on this you get the same output third time you do you get the same same output right so the hash of a file any time it is done remains the same because it does not use key okay now i am asking you a question suppose i am using i am encrypting a file if instead of hashing i am encrypting this using cbc would i get the same output every time anyone I guess because, because we were using that randomization of initialization. Yes, very right. Very right. So you won't get surprised when you encrypt a file for the second time, you get different output because of this randomization factor. Very good. IV value. Okay, but hash will remain the same. All right. Okay. So hash function we can define as H on M. M is a message okay which can be of arbitrary length any length but output is always fixed length of n bit so this is can be seen as a mapping of a bit string which is zero and combination of zero and one of any length because it starts shows any length into a mapping which is of size n so no, note that it's not one to one mapping like we have done in case of encryption block encryption right okay so essentially input length could be any but output length is small and short is it deterministic it means that same input you do hash you get the same output as many times if you want you do it it should be very easy to compute otherwise nobody would use it and it's a one way ness okay given one way ness is given a hash function it is very difficult to get the original one okay it, it okay you can you can you cannot it's infeasible to get the original from the hash output okay uh, all right security is a security is secure enough there's a security property which is called collision resistance which we'll study in next slide or after a few slides okay note that this is not one to one mapping okay all right so still we want security it means that many such strings can map onto this hash okay this hash output okay but finding out whatever is the second string which will hash onto this should be very difficult it's kind of infeasible in polynomial time okay so and you know another property is that is random or unpredictability so basically in the original text that you want to hash you change one bit it will affect a large number of bits in hash outputs suppose you have a number that you are hashing say this let's assume one zero 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 one zero one zero change this to change the last bit to one rest of the bits will remain same and if you hash this hash of the change one should be very different from hash of the original one although there is a one bit change okay so uh, so by changing one bit what you will get is unpredictable pattern all right and so changing one bit in input causes your output to look very, very different. Okay, and this is called random or oracle. All right, any question up to this point? Okay, as we said that output of hash function is of fixed length. 
is generally between 158 to 512 bits depending on what hash function you are using okay all right so any change in message no matter how small will change many bits of the hash value that we already discussed right okay and we the last point also discussed that hash function is unkeyed we are not using any key here okay so anybody can compute hashes on any message so it's a, it means that you have a message m to send and in between mallory sees it she can also find out uh, h of m okay so however it is difficult to construct text given a given its hash so reverse function is not possible okay okay uh, and also it is difficult to modify text without changing its hash okay so basically if you have a message m and if it's a hash of hm okay now it is very difficult to find this find m dash which will also give you h of m is almost infeasible now we know that it's a the many to one mapping so there will be some message m dash but we we'll, should not be able to find out this in reasonable time okay so hence we can use this as a message digest okay so what is the use of it so uh, uh, alice is sending a message m okay to bob and bob receives it okay and along with its hash so alice sends a message m so bob receives a message m with hash okay now this message on this message m bob uh, bob uh, uses hash and calculates h dash now compare this h dash with h if it's the same then he can make out that nobody has in between change the value of uh, change, made any changes to message now what does it mean is it very secure way this is very this works fine if h is h has reached properly to other end if mallory has modified value of h so if mallory is in between man of the middle and she is doing man in the middle attack she changes m to m dash and she also changes and she calculates h to the corresponding hash of this and change finds out h dash and sends this to Bob, Bob will never be able to find out. Okay, then we'll see how to overcome all these problems. All right, but right now we are into discussion of what hash function is, and later on, as we study distal signature and other features, we'll see how we can use both hash and encryption functions. Okay, so this is another way of looking at this. This are basically we have message m and output is just hash, small hash okay this is pictorially is depicted so i thought it's good to present it see this is another way of showing that whatever is the message okay so look at the second and third message where second message is i am not a crook okay it's hash function is this one while you know in the um, third message is which says i am not a cook where r is missing and and you can see h of this is very different from h of earlier function uh, earlier message all right okay so what is the use case one use case is that okay sorry about it okay uh, we can do the document comparison right as we have discussed earlier but in that case the h has to reach properly 
original edge has to be reached properly. So Alice and Bob have one GB document and which both of, uh, they can both compute a hash over the document and communicate at hashes to each other. If hashes are the same, the file must be the same. Same fingerprint, right? If the hashes are different, file must be different. So it's, uh, some very simple things we can do, okay? So Bob sends a file, one GB file, to Alice and uh, Alice also have same file and she sends it to Bob and uh, both sends H along with and then comparison is done. If hashes are same then file must be different because Bob can also calculate the hash over of the received file and original value of hash. Right, so uh, they can find out from this whether hashes match or not. If hashes match, then file must be the same. Okay, all right. Okay. Now look at the mapping function. So we, unlike encryption, it is not one-to-one -one mapping. It's many-to-one mapping. Okay, uh, so because message can be of any length. But digest is always of fixed length of n bits. Okay, so there is a possibility that two, now of course, you know, I mean, what we are showing here is a complete space. And here, what we are showing is that uh, a message here inside. Okay, so now we can say that H function is a lossy compression function because there is a possibility of collision. So we take consider, you know, because this space is much bigger than the digest space. Okay, because digest space is only n bit strings, while this can be of any length. So many such combinations. Suppose this is a five bits, and this is one thousand bits. So we can have two raised power 1000 combinations here. They are all mapping into two raised power five different types of strings, right? So obviously then, then many of them from this space will map onto a single digest, okay? And if this, that happens, then we can, we say there is a collision. So collision, it means that we can find out two strings here, X and X dash, and both map to same Y here, or same, when HX is same as HX dash, okay? So this, this is a possibility, okay? All right, this first property, and another is that HX should look random. Of course, this we have already studied, okay? So what are the properties of hash function? First is called one way ness that we have already studied. Okay. It says that given output Y, it is impossible, it's infeasible to find any X such that H of X is Y. Intuitively, it means that given an output of hash function, okay, given an output of hash function, for example, here, it should not be possible to find the value of X where Okay, so uh, where hx is equal to y. So given y, you will not be able to find what is the value of x. Okay. So in other way to say oh, this, that there is, yeah. Any question? Yeah, sir, you said that uh, like oh, hash function is married to one function. And one of the use case was document comparison. Let's see if yeah. the files have very small size. And the hash function, uh, like the uh, h of x uh, and h of x dash is same. Then how then we can compare the documents in that case? Like in the small files, it can be the case that no? the hash function computes the same value for. Yeah. So uh, uh, if, even if the input size is smaller than hash function, what is the issue? Uh, I, I I'm saying that the hash function may have computed. So so basically, uh, it is. Hash yeah, so usually hash is, let's assume 128 bit hash, right, value. And let's assume the input is of certain size, say 10 bits. 
okay then obviously there is algorithm which will do some kind of manipulation right because again it's based on certain length we have to create and then these functions can be applied hash functions will be applied right so essentially we'll have to do some kind of padding to make it big at least 512 bits or something like that okay and then we can apply this hash function because output then is always 128 bits or something like that okay but actually okay. i was saying that the two files may have the hash that uh, that is formed from the two files it may be same like uh, it's a many to one function so how we can use in document comparison in that case uh, okay the but the probability probability of that that two documents having different inputs yet hashing into one is very difficult it so theoretically is possible you're right but practically is not possible that's the property that we'll study okay sir. okay you can find out another you know if you do random what do you call that uh, cracking kind of thing exhaustive search of the other string which match into same hash function yes you can find out but how much time you are going to take if you are going to take you know 1000 years then it's not practical and that comes from the property of the hash function design hash function in such a way that it is given value of x okay given value of x you can easily calculate h of x which is y it is infeasible in polynomial time to find another value of x uh, x dash another say value of x dash that will map into same y okay of course this is a very important property that's called uh, uh we'll we'll come to that it's uh, it's a uh, it's called a weak preimage okay of course we are not comp uh, studying this but you can read about it right so it this finding out another string in polynomial time is not possible but you can always do that if you have thousands of years okay all right very good question so now more formally for polynomial time adversary probability of x chosen randomly from plain text such that y is equal to hx is such that okay uh, okay okay probability that x chosen randomly from plain text such that y is equal to hx so, so adversary for adversary finding out x dash which result to same y is negligible so this probability essentially what it says is that given value of x which maps into y finding out another x dash which maps into same y the probability of that is negligible very small very very small in other words the time it will take for you to find out another x dash and do h function and compare it with output with y will take huge amount of time got it okay so you can always find out but how much time it will take is the question okay so you you can use the brute force when you keep generating values of x uh, you know uh, this is this this is the given hx is equal to y keep generating different values of x dash x2 dash whatever yeah? different combinations using brute force depending on length of the text right you'll have to generate exhaustively all those combinations and apply h function and y so it will take a lot of time so for example uh, one of the algorithm is that produces 160 bit output is called sha1 
okay so in order to break this you will have to generate a large number of combinations of input will will uh, which will result into same 160 bit output it will take millions of years by one most powerful computer okay so given value of x finding out x dash which will map onto same h of x is almost infeasible in polynomial time that's the message all right so something that we call it collision resistance this is another property the two inputs given two different inputs with the same output so x is not equal to x dash that because they are different and h x is equal to h x dash now if that happens that's called collision so question then very rightly you ask which is which answers so we have answer here that can we design a hash function with no collision answer is no because we are doing many to one mapping okay so however what we want to do is that we want to make finding collision infeasible for an attacker so given value of x if attacker can find out x dash then its attacker job is simple but we don't want this to happen so that's how we design hash functions okay so something we call is collision resistance it means that it is infeasible for any attacker to find any pair of x and x dash such that hx is equal to hx dash now this is more a stronger condition than the earlier one right the one we mentioned here given value of x find of x dash which will map onto the same output y this simpler condition than just find out any pair of x and x dash given value of h find out any pair of h and x dash which will map onto same output y okay and can you do this in polynomial time no if answer is no then we can say that hash function is collision resistant this is much stronger condition because you can find any pair rather than given value of x you have to find value of x dash which maps right so this is called a stronger collision resistance okay weaker the one is that given value of x you find out x dash here we say just find that any two okay all right okay for example consider a hash function which generates 128 bit output our input size is just 158 bits now which is little more than the output right okay so now we can find out that 2 raised power 22 that's over uh, whatever right how many millions uh, over 4 million of these has values map to each possible output value okay so and but collision resistant property says that all of these collisions are completely very hard to find All right, now let's look at simple thing. So what is the probability that two of you in this class will have birthday on the same day, same date? No, I'm not talking about year, but I'm talking about the day of the year, right? Whatever, right? Say for example, 10th May or 2nd January and so on. What is the probability? is it more than half or more than 0 0.5 this class i think i don't know what is the class strength right now but uh, it should be about uh, let's assume 100 do you think the probability is greater than half that two of you in this class have the same birthday yeah or yes or no yes sir yeah possibly you know somebody 
very easily you can prove that, right? Okay. So basically, the two of you will have same birthday. You need the class strength of an uh, twenty-three. Okay. Then you can simply find out the probability that you know you know one person has birthday on a particular day, then second person is an other day, and so on and so forth, right? And then calculate this and divide it, uh, subtract it from one, and you get the answer. Which essentially approximates to 365. Look at the birthday problem. If you're under theoretical computer and a little bit of probability, you can uh, read more about it. Okay, so but how do we apply this? Okay, so if hx is n bits, okay, the output or digest is of n bits. And two raised power n combinations are possible of this hash value, right? If you hash about square root of two raised power n, which is equal to two raised power n by two values, then you expect to find a collision. Right? So essentially it means that you need to do two raised power n by two work to find a break. What is the n? Now you have to choose n appropriately. Okay, if n is large enough, say 128 or 256 or something like this or 512, then it turns out to be 2 raised to 4, 2, 512 by 2 is a 256 attempts you'll have to make to break it, which is very, very huge number. Okay, that's the implication. Okay, so no, initially uh, there was MD5, MD4 series. MD5 was the one and it could, they could break it because you know the value of n was small and the steps in hash function were just few. Okay, and since then we have improved it. And now we use SHA, SHA1 or, or SHA3, which are very complex. Okay, so it's not possible to break them easily. Okay, under this desired properties have Lange effect. It means that change one bit of input, it will affect at least half of the output bits. So just one bit of input, half of the output bits of the hash value will change. Okay, hash works by hashing messages in block, like encryption, that block encryption works in fixed size blocks. Okay, similarly here, uh, we'll have to Whatever be input size of message, we'll have to convert this into blocks and do hashing on that. And then combine them, manipulate and combine them in certain ways, right? All right? And hash function, of course, when we create hash, as we have seen in case of encryption, we have shifting, rotation, row shifting, and all that. Here, hash function all will also have multiple rounds. Now, they read about one wayness and collision resistance, both are not the same. Okay. Hashing is one way that we have already studied by now when we compare it with encryption. Okay. So, in encryption, we can do decryption also. Given uh, encryption key, then use the key and you can do decryption like exclusive or one in one time pattern. Okay, but here there is no concept of key in case of hashing. So you cannot, given some Y, which is hash output, you cannot create X. Okay, this is not possible. Okay, while in case of encryption, given Y, it is encrypted output, not hash output, encrypted output. And given a key, you can apply and you can get X. You cannot get X in case of hash. Okay, hash of X looks random, but it can be compared for equality. What does it mean? Every time you given one string X, every time you do 
hash of that, it comes out to be same value of output. Okay. That's not true in case of encryption. You encrypt the same text multiple times, you get multiple outputs because there is a concept of randomness that's built into it. So we can call uh, hashes also as message digest of cryptographic checksums. Okay, so what are the common types of hashes? MD5, which is totally broken now. Okay, which has 128 bit output. Then the SHA-1, which outputs 168 bits, is security was broken in 2017, but still in use. SHA-2, which uses output of 256, 384, and 500. Note that we are increasing the size of size of uh, hash output, right? Or digest because because we can apply birthday problem and we'll see that becomes it will require more number of attempts to break it. Okay. So a short two and short three are current standards now. Okay, short three also use a 512 bit, where design is slightly different from short two. Okay, so one attack that's possible is called length extension attack given two messages M1 and M2, where M2 is uh, M1 concatenated with some value X, okay? Then H of M2 can be computed based on H of M1 and X. Now, this is a weakness, right? So, essentially it means that given you M1, you find out of H of M1, and you get say y1, okay? And given you some value of some string x, okay? Now what you can do is that use this value y1 and use some way x, some, 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 some way x. And then you can get same value, just a minute, just a minute, <laughs> okay. Okay, okay. All right, so you can get same by manipul by manipulation. You can get uh, from this H of M one plus X. All right. So now this is a weakness. Okay. So we can say that given H X and length of X, but not X, attacker can create H X condition of M for any M the attacker of attackers choosing. All right, so uh, it means that this weakness exists. So this does not violate any property hash function, but it is undesirable. Okay, all right, so now, can we prove integrity with the hash function? Yes, we can prove integrity with hash function provided what are we doing with it. Okay, what is the threat model? Okay, so for example, Mozilla has published new version of Firefox and you download it. Okay, how do you know that it is not tempered? How do you know something that you downloaded from a website which could be malicious website? Okay, it's not tempered or there is a man in the middle who is intercepting your communication and sending you a different file altogether. Okay, so what we can do is that Mozilla also hashes that program binary, whatever you're downloading, it's hashed output is also available and you also download this hashed, uh, you know, hash output and then when you this file is available to you, you calculate hash of this file, okay? And compare this value with something that you receive it from the website. Now, can it work? It will work only if you are able to download this properly. 
Okay, it means that the, this hash is not intercepted by Mallory in between. It's not changed the value of that. Right? Okay, but you can always do that uh, if there is some scheme of you to download the hash of that properly. So now, all right, if all right. So basically the model here is that we assume the attacker cannot modify hash on the website. While attacker is able to modify M in some way, you know, I mean like one of the, you know, web website manipulation is that you somehow because of uh, some weakness, you can change some bits. But somehow the website is designed in such a way hash of the original file or program is there which Mallory cannot modify. Then you get the actual value of hash and you get corrupted value of file or corrupted file. Then if you just do hash of the something that you received, match it with the downloaded uh, value of hash. Then if it doesn't match, then you know the file that you downloaded is corrupted, right? Okay. So here integrity is as long as you can communicate hash securely. All right. Now another example, just the, after the example, we'll stop. Alice and Bob want to communicate over insecure channel. Okay. So here is Bob, Alice, sending message to Bob and Mallory in between. Okay, so so now uh, Alice sends message to Bob with message M and also sends H of M. Okay, so Bob receives it and computes, uh, Bob receives M and computes, so let's assume Bob receives M dash and computes H of M dash and also receives this H of M. If both match, then Bob will assume that file is okay. Okay, all right, the simple thing. Now what happens if Mallory is in between and Mallory receives M and changes this to M double dash and she calculates the H of M double dash, which is H of M double dash, sends this to Bob, will Bob make out that this message has been changed by Mallory? No. Okay, so if the threat model allows Mallory to modify both message and hash of that, then it's not possible for Bob to find out that there has been, the, the message has been changed. Okay, hence there is no integrity. Okay, so do hashes provide integrity depending on your threat model? All right, so that's all. Okay, the use of hash function is message authentication, message integrity, digital signature, storing of password hashes, message fingerprint, integrity of software definition, and time stamping. So we'll, we'll look at some of this later when we'll study, say for example, digital signatures and HMAC, et cetera. Okay, there are some things for you to self-study, attacks, which is primarily brute force attack. Okay, these are the commonly used hash functions. This is outdated, this sometimes used, but uh, it's also broken. SHA-2 and SHA-3 are being used, right? And use here, we'll go through it in just five minutes in the next class, see how it works. Okay, at very, very, Gross uh, top level, not getting into details. Okay, any question?
so regarding the quiz uh, the questions will be basically conceptual or uh, like uh, terminology based or uh, like there are facts in the slides also uh, like facts and some uh, history uh, etc so that will be also included or not Uh, you are muted, sir. Sorry. Okay. Just a minute. 